and welcome to Riverside Park. So the purpose of this park to me was to start a new project in which I am going to uh, build different versions of this park over the decades. Um, I need to find a park that was closed so I could create an alternate history of it and I settled on Riverside Amusement Park which was based in Indianapolis. So this park closed in 1970 um, really because of mismanagement and uh, the cost of the rides was too expensive and they also had some issues um, where they had a uh, some bad uh, policies when it came to letting people in the park so it, it had a bad reputation so um, it ended up closing so I did find a bunch of research materials um, some with the names of the rides and what type of rides there were but um, not everything had a picture so part of it is uh, a reproduction of the original part of it is just made up so starting from the front this um, barn here um, that was originally in the park and uh, I don't actually know what was in it but I made it into a food barn because it seemed like the appropriate thing to do and uh, I just put a few shops in there and a restroom, um, which I'm gonna probably change later in the next version of the park because it doesn't seem like to be the most sanitary thing to have the restroom right there next to shops. Um, anyway, moving on, we have the caterpillar here. Um, this one actually I did find a picture of, so this is pretty similar to the original. Um, I think it's just a little wider. This canopy here was not as large, uh, but I wanted to keep the line a little bit longer. And uh, that's annoying. Anyway, um, then uh, we had a pond here, which um, at first I thought maybe they had used as a pool uh, for swimming. But in the pictures you see, uh, that is also fence like it is here. Um, when uh, uh, Mike and John review the park, uh, they mentioned about the mill shoot uh, ride that uh, usually it would um, dump you into an untreated pond. And uh, there's another possibility of what this could be. Uh, um, mill shoot pond that was uh, later abandoned and they just built a bridge over it. Um, <clears throat> then on the other side we have the driller and the layout of this coaster is uh, pretty much made up. Um, I did find a map of um, the area that um, a military base made this map and uh, it had an approximate layout of the coaster but it wasn't very specific or very helpful um, and I also couldn't find a picture really of the station um, I think the station wasn't actually pointing in this direction I believe it was pointing the street here um, but I wanted to keep the park compact that's why I put it on that side and this is actually more a reproduction of a ride that was actually across the street. Um, I think it was a side friction and uh, the building looked very similar to this. So this layout is not exactly the best um, as I just like build it quickly and like it was mentioned in the review at the Planko Spotlight is um, just probably too wide um, so I will probably fix that on the next version of the park then we have um, some Midway games I um, actually use Rebel Trillions Midway games and I modified them a little bit to fit this uh, park um, 
His uh, building was uh, a little bit nicer than this. This is supposed to be a boring, failing park, so I had to make everything a little more plain. Um, and I also added the shops uh, just so that people would walk in this direction and not just ignore uh, this area altogether. Um, on this side, this building, although we have a teacups right here, it was originally a large carousel. Um, but the carousel and panic coaster is really small, so we couldn't really, um, I couldn't really use that for this. It wasn't the right size, so the teacups seem to fit better. The cover, though, it is similar to what did exist, uh, was covering the carousel. Um, even with the little ball ornament thing on top. Then if we move on, this is a my attempt at reproducing an Alan Herschel mouse. Um, these uh, were actually pretty poor and cheap. And um, the mouse was probably not here originally. Um, I believe there was a walkthrough attraction in this area. Um, uh, but I couldn't find a reference of where this mouse actually was. So I think this would be a good place because I did not have any references for the walkthrough attraction. Like there was no pictures or anything. I just know it's there because it was on the map that I found. And although it was an Alan Herschel mouse based on the pictures that I saw, I never saw the entrance. So I decided to take... Um, a reference from pictures of other entrances of those um, similar rides and just make a kind of cheesy mouse uh, cover to enter on. Um, there was horse rides at the park so that's why I um, put this here. I don't think it was actually here. I'm not sure where it would have been. Um, but I, uh, I put some stables, like uh, the horses wouldn't be actually kept here all the time. They would just be brought and uh, for the rides and then taken home later. Um, so I had to build an entrance on the back so the truck could come and deliver the horses every once in a while. Then on the other side, there's a hyperspin that wasn't originally actually here in this location. Uh, the hyperspin was uh, where the carousel is, which is right here. Um, but since I wanted to have a carousel in this park anyway, that's why I swapped their locations. Then the most interesting and large building of this park was this. Um, there was a big reference for it. Um, uh, there was multiple pictures. and. Um, the sign might not be exactly the way it was originally, but it is pretty close, um, including with the little flagpoles and um, the windows. Um, the material, I'm not sure what it was, I just chose a light shade of concrete because this is supposed to be a very permanent structure. Um, and then inside... Um, we have a few shops in the back that apparently nobody goes to because they're too far. <laughs> and then the skate rental places. This um, location actually was also used uh, for a dance hall, which seems pretty appropriate for a large space like this to have multiple uses. And going back out. The chair swings. Um, this type of chair swing, I don't think it existed back then when this park uh, was functioning. Um, they, um, they were not like this and they did not tilt either at that time. Um, there was a chair swing, but it was a more um, uh, precarious structure. Um, it was more like a pole in the middle and some arms and it would just like spin around. Um, and then let's see.
the roof of this. Um, I was trying to keep the parts number down, so instead of using the brackets, I just use four nether pillars. And I staggered them a little bit so that they wouldn't look all the same. I rotated them as well. Um, changed the color on them a little bit. Actually, no, I did not change the color. Uh, when you rotate them, they give you different uh, textures and they're darker on one side and the other. Uh, so that is actually pretty convenient. Then we have the windmill, which I thought the... The piece that Planet Coaster gives is it's kind of large, but it ended up working at the end. And um, the whole side here is actually made out of wood windows. Uh, that's the only piece I could find that I could manipulate um, to this uh, small pointy end here. Uh, and on the other side, I have the mill chute. And this was, of course, a different type of car back then. They did not have this shapes, but um, we are limited in the number of water rides that we have in the game. So this seemed to fit the bill as best as it could. Um, the structure uh, was uh, pretty similar to a reference picture I found. And uh, if you notice, I also skipped uh, some planks and some of the wooden pieces are uh, crooked just to signal that it's uh, kind of an older ride um, there is a cross bridge here for uh, people to get back in case they get stuck on the lift hill they would walk around this area past the pump and get back into the park area uh, by the way the pump uh, that's here. It's actually a reproduction of what uh, wings and strings made for No Name Landia. And Gem Knight was uh, kind enough to make a copy and put it in the workshop. Uh, so that to this is done. Moving on. We have a few small shops here on the side. A restroom, the first aid. The photos booth that we don't actually have a real photos booth, mm -hmm. um, so I decided to close it. And then at the side here we have the bumper cars, and the bumper cars in the game are way too nice for this park. Uh, this is supposed to be a somewhat boring park, a failing park, so I had to cover them up, and this is as small as I could get the cover. Um, so it uh, it's still a little large, but uh, I think it worked out okay. Then on the other side we have the flash, and we also um, twisted some of the planks so that it looks like it's slightly falling apart. Um, and uh, I was luckier with the flash, where I did find uh, better pictures of the um, how the ride looked. I had made it, if you saw the first video of how this part was made, um, I had actually made it too short and then when I found the picture, I made a better reproduction of it. Um, and that includes these little arches on the side. These were part of the original ride of the station. Um, I think it curved somehow, um, but um, I needed it to be uh, straight to get back to the station already, so I just decided to go for a straightaway here instead of doing a curve. And then other details uh, of the park, there are some outside parking lots uh, and there are dirt parking lots because uh, this park was uh, wouldn't be able to afford having um, paved parking lots yet. And then um, uh, more details that we have are the uh, power lines, which also make the park look a little bit older. And if you notice, um, all the right buildings have uh, uh, junction boxes where you would connect the power to. 
so also the back of the shops have one and they these all these power lines connect to a uh, little power station. I was not very detailed about this power station. I just wanted to make it look like one. And uh, <coughs> also back here on the side, um, just to add a little more flair to it, I put uh, some piles of leaves. And, and outside the park, there's also some detail. Uh, so by the river, if you notice, uh, I painted the dirt paths that go to the river. And there's also some parking spots where you would go and hang out and just go chill by the river. Um, and talking about painting, I also spent a lot of time uh, painting the ground because uh, the park needed to look old and unkept. And that was a better way to do it. Also, the paths um, needed to look like they were being walked on. Um, so if you place down the path from the from the path tool here under the the natural paths, um, it will make it like if it's been walked on, but it's not it wasn't quite enough for the spark. So I had to do a little extra painting, and uh, I also had to blend it in with different uh, shades of green and dirt and dead grass, um, and then of course leaves under each uh, three everywhere. Um, also in the bushes, just to make it look more uncut, um, I hit the uh, these creosote bush um, just to make it look a little more uncut. And uh, that's it. That's a review of Riverside. And then I'll be back when I rebrand the park for the 1972 version. Thank you for watching.